Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Arrayon's Laser Simulation and Optimization Project Team presentation. My name is Bennett Lalo, and I'm joined by my teammate, Jonathan Fasano. So who is Arrayon? They are a company that designs and manufactures carbon dioxide lasers for a multitude of companies across the globe. Their lasers have power that emits between 30 and 250 watts, and their beams are emitted at a wavelength of 10.6 micrometers, which is outside the visible spectrum of light. This project had many sources of motivation, but the main one is that, despite how often they're used throughout the laser industry, carbon dioxide lasers are very poorly documented. This means that Arrayon has a lot of difficulty implementing changes into its lasers as they need to be done manually to change all the parameters and then tested to see if they actually work. This costs the company a lot of time and money, and, and with the use of a simulation, they'd be able to cut down on the expenditure of a lot of these resources and operate more efficiently as a company. Now, while modeling a laser may seem easy, I can assure you that that isn't the case. This project is atypical of most capstone design projects as it requires a background in physics more so than it does computer or electrical engineering. This means that we had to acquire an entirely new set of skills for this project that no class before this has ever really taught us. This ranged from basic Fourier optics to the addition of many complex mathematical functions, such as the one depicted on screen here. All of this was done to be able to properly understand how laser outputs work and to then model an existing radion resonator in MATLAB mathematically from the ground up. The best anticipated outcome of this project is to create a mathematical model for our radion that exhibits the qualities of an actual laser beam while also being able to present attributes such as beam quality and spatial distribution. In addition, we were asked to make this resonator robust so that many of the parameters could be changed and experimented with within free time. In addition, we were also asked to provide a user interface and a manual in order to make the software easier to use by staff. While this wasn't a hard requirement, it was highly requested by our technical director. I'm pleased to announce that the best anticipated outcome of the project was achieved, and these additional features like the GUI and manual were implemented as well. Our project had a very long road to it, and for the most part, it started with us learning about basic laser physics and optics so that we could understand how to properly model a laser output in general. After this, we then worked on modeling the actual laser we were given, which was easily the part of the project that took the most time to complete. Once it was completed, we then had to fine tune the laser's attributes based on actual laser data, and then complete the GUI to go alongside it, along with the manual. Jonathan will now go into more detail about the Resonator model itself. The specific laser that Iradian has tasked us with modeling is known as the negative branch confocal unstable resonator. This is the ideal configuration for high power CO2 laser applications. The mirrors on either end of the cavity are off axis yet share a common focal point, resulting in a laser with high tolerance to mirror misalignment errors. There is no closed form solution to this type of laser, hence the need for modeling software. For modeling purposes, we replace the mirrors by convex lenses. The light then travels through the system and some escapes through an aperture causing, forming the output beam. To increase the distance of propagation, we use a method called unfolding the resonator. This is a system that we set up a periodic array of ideal convex lenses, and with each period, some light escapes through the aperture. We expect that with increased distance of propagation, the beam will eventually become more and more ideal. We were able to verify this through our model, which shows that indeed, as the beam reaches sufficient distance, we do get the Gaussian uh, output seen here, which is known as the far field intensity output, and this is the ideal laser beam. After having established a base resonator model, we began testing with the actual lasers at the iRadian facility. We spent an afternoon running tests for various figures of interest, which would serve to tune and revise the model for the course of the project. Seen on the left is a beam image captured with the camera in the lab, and on the right is the results from the computational model. After significant trial and error, we were able to generate results such as these, as well as for other beam metrics, which successfully resembled our target outputs. This was a major milestone in our project and enabled us to begin packaging the graphical user interface. The GUI was designed to take inputs such as wavelength, cavity geometry, and mirror specifications and provide functionalities necessary for Iradian to make informed cavity design modifications as they aim to optimize a range of resonator parameters. I'll speak on a few of these functionalities now. Uh, most importantly was the ability to resolve the intensity distribution for a given set of inputs. To be able to verify that the profile matches uh, the highly concentrated Gaussian beam was paramount for this project, 
as it speaks to the overall predictive uh, effectiveness of the laser's design. Uh, the next feature we added was uh, some critical information about the beam's quality. So this was done by sampling the beam through what's known as the Rayleigh range. We used the four sigma Gaussian statistical method to calculate this range, and then we measured the beam radius within it. This information, uh, with this information, we were able to calculate and output what's known as the beam divergence angle, as well as the m squared value, which are uh, pretty much the two most crucial beam quality parameters. The image on the left shows this general process, and the image on the right is the result from running this process. The values found here were within 5% of our target outputs. The next feature is the ability to extract the intensity profile for both the stable and unstable axes. This, this provides the beam geometry data, which makes it possible to isolate and analyze each individual axis characteristic. Lastly, we added functionality to predict the power output as a function of the mirrors, as a function of the mirror angles. Um, seen here is the power output as a result by varying the front mirror angle and sweeping the back mirror, which shows optimal design, optimal cavity designs for Iradian. Then it will now conclude with the remaining scope of the project. With the GUI completed, the last step in completing the project was to provide the accompanying manual to, uh, to allow a Radeon staff to understand how the program is supposed to be used. The manual discusses how the general program will, um, is supposed to be used, along with the many parameters and what they do, along with how the program itself runs after a calculation has begun. In addition, the, it also denotes the various functions within the program and their uses in the event a Radeon wants to tweak or improve upon this model in the future. Overall, this model will allow Rayon to test for the most optimal measures for their current laser models and allow them to document existing other features that they've been looking for but have not been able to currently, such as the best measures for their mirrors in order to not lose a ton of power. This will also allow them to model new lasers in the future and increase the production line. Rayon has, a, has a, a, yeah, possession of this particular uh, model currently and can immediately put it to use within their facility. We'd like to thank everyone who has supported this project up to this point, and we'd like to extend special congratulations to our consulting director, Adam Carr, for receiving his PhD this week. <laughs>